Hello everyone, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Freelance Friday. Today we're talking about social media scheduling tools for freelancers. Before I get started, I just want to let you guys know in case you don't watch any of my other videos that I am planning a podcast to be launched next month in January. It's called Freelance Friday Podcast. You can go to freelancefridaypodcast.com and submit your email so you will get a notification whenever it launches. It will be soon, sooner than later. I'm really excited for you guys to listen in and I know that's a lot of you guys' preferred consumption methods for content so I'm really excited I have a lot of the episodes recorded already but if you have topics that you'd like to hear make sure to get in touch with me and let me know there's also a little form on there if you're interested in being a guest so you can click on that and let me know with that said a very common question that I get in regards to social media is how do you schedule content and I have tried a number of different social media scheduling tools over the years I prefer to use things that are very low cost because I don't take a million clients. Obviously, I take a few clients a month. So it doesn't make sense for me to get like a huge system that costs, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars a month to use. So uh, I use Buffer for a really long time. Buffer is amazing. I'm not going to do a full tutorial on this because it is super user friendly. It's like the easiest thing to figure out. There is a free plan and then there's like the awesome plan that I think is $10 a month. The reason that I stopped using Buffer is because there's no real, well, I think there is now. I think they, they, they um, introduced a new feature, which I have not tried out yet. But at the time when I was using it, using it, there was no real way to like listen and to engage with your audience. So it didn't really make sense. It's nice to schedule, um, but I use I still use Buffer for myself for like my personal stuff. If I just need to schedule a quick post onto my own personal Twitter or Facebook or something. But for brands, for companies, um, for clients, it doesn't really make as much sense because you can't like reply to comments and that, you know, do uh, crisis management, do customer service, all of that stuff. The other thing that I've used uh, and that I still technically do use is called Social Pilot. That one's okay. I think I pay $50 a month for it and um, I don't like the scheduling of it personally. I use it, but it's not my favorite. One reason that it is really good is because you can actually have separate teams. You can invite your client to give you access to their social profiles without having them actually um, give you their their password, which is really cool and really professional. I also like the analytics. They're okay. It puts it out in a really nice report that you can just screenshot or download or whatever. And you don't have to like fiddle around with Word docs and Excel sheets and all that stuff when you need to report to your clients. I do think that I'm gonna leave them pretty soon for this last tool. And this is the main gist of the video. That's why I kind of talked over the f those first two pretty quickly. You can kind of explore those on your own. But what I really wanna talk about today is a new tool that I found very recently. It's called Social Weaver. Um, Social Weaver is really cool. This is not a sponsored video. They have no idea that I'm making this video, but it has really changed the game for me. I have only used it so far for my own personal brand. I haven't expanded it to even to my business entity or to my clients, but I have been using it for A Journey East, um, my Twitter and my Facebook, just to test it out and see how it's going. And I wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's a really great tool. So far I'm using the free option and I'm able to do a lot of really cool things with it. So what I'm gonna do is actually hop behind my computer and screen record and give you a walkthrough of the tool. Again, this is not sponsored or anything. I just think it's really awesome. Um, I recommend using the free version, testing it out and seeing how it goes. Haven't seen any reviews on this yet or uh, videos or anything like that so thought I would share. So here is Social Weaver. For the purpose of this video, I am going to not do the free trial of the pro plan. I'll go over here to pricing so you can see the difference. This is the plan that I'm gonna be showing you, the free plan, which is $0 per month, three channels, so uh, either three, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube handles, or a combination of the three up to 100 scheduled posts and 200 stored posts. And then their pro plan is $49 per month. You get 15 channels, some additional scheduled posts, additional stored posts, um, as well as sentiment analysis and in-app live chat support. You can sign up for the trial without a credit card. But like I said, for this video, I just wanna show you what the free plan gets you. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. I haven't set up any streams yet, so we're gonna do that together, but I have definitely been publishing from here. 
What I'll show you first is the channel section. So you're gonna click on channels. This is how you're going to actually connect to your accounts. And one thing that I wanna do, I haven't done this yet, is connect my YouTube account. So I have my Facebook fan page and, which I hate that term, fan page, my Facebook page, whatever, ajourneyeast.com, and my Twitter for a journey East. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my YouTube just to see what this does. Okay, so that's how you would connect them. I have three now, so as you can see, I am maxed out on my free profiles. First thing I'm gonna show you is the publisher. So click on this little arrow thing, and this is what I've been using a lot lately, as you can see. So these are all posts that I have found and curated and put into the tool, and I have set them out to go out on a schedule. Now, I'll explain that by going to my calendar. So I have three different schedules right here. I have inspiration slash motivation, my own content and news and industry content. And they're all color coded and you can see them on this calendar feature here. And this goes out pretty far. I can actually click on this schedule. So let's just look at the inspiration schedule. I can click on it and this is how often I have these pieces of content going out. Um, I have it going out Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 12.07 p.m. I have this schedule running until the end of January. The reason that I ended it at the end of January is just so I can go back and like refresh and you know, so things don't get too, too repetitive, I guess. I just wanted to end it at some point so I wasn't like, why are these posts going out until the end of time? But you can have them go out until the end of time. And I've just tried to scatter my content. Um, I'm just doing like one piece of promotional content because I also put out my daily uploads. So this is just like an evergreen piece of my own content. So really like a throwback post or something like that. So I just have that going on on Thursday for now. And then news and industry is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. So this is kind of just like anything that has to do with social media, YouTube, influencer marketing, that kind of thing. Now, the cool thing about this is that all these pieces of content, you load into these different folders, if you will, but they get distributed on their own. So I don't get to pick, or I don't have to pick, I can pick if I want to, but I don't have to pick, okay, for my own content, last week's Freelance Friday is gonna go out this Thursday, and then this, like, it automatically takes everything that I've loaded up into that folder and just spits them out whenever it wants to, which is really, really nice. It kind of just automatically recycles your content. It's really cool. And I'm gonna show you how you add that content in here. You're gonna go to content library. And so I have all my different folders here. Um, these ones were automatically populated. Um, I think I changed courses because I don't think that was automatically populated, but they automatically populate like some suggested types of content for you to put out. I created my own, so news, motivation, and vlogs and blogs. So if I click on any of those, this is um, motivation that it's showing right now. These are all pieces of content that I've loaded up into there. News, same thing. And then vlogs and blogs, I just started this one. So let's go ahead and add some more of my own content and I'll show you how this works. And actually for this one, I'm going to add a hashtag at the end. I like to use the SMM hashtag. Okay, so what first thing I'm gonna do is find a piece of content. So let's just go ahead and go into my YouTube videos. I'm gonna go to my Freelance Friday playlist. Since it's getting to be tax time, I'll make sure I get this one out. This is about taxes and all that stuff. So I like to share things with the playlist, so I copy this link. Now, major downfall about Social Weaver, and I actually spoke with someone from the company recently who told me that this is on their priority list to change, but the major downfall, in my opinion, is that it does not have a URL shortener. So if you click on add content, I'm gonna make this a Twitter post it doesn't shorten the URL. So what I do is I just go into Bitly and create a short link on my own. So it is an extra step, that's why it's up there. But like I said, they said that they're working on it, so hopefully that is the case. So then you just write your tweet. So, um, so then I'm just gonna click Add to Library and make sure it's categorized in the right place, like I said, so it goes out on the right schedule. Or if I wanted to, I could just schedule it for like um, tomorrow if it was just a specific thing I wanted scheduled. Or I could just publish now. And then the cool thing about publish now too is that you can actually save it to your content library at the same time. So I'm just gonna click add to library. I don't want it to go out now. And then as you can see here, it auto-populates like this is the tweet preview of what it will look like on desktop. 
And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's try another one. I can also click here on post preview and this is gonna show me what it's actually gonna look like on Twitter, which is pretty cool. I can also add a photo or video. So if I wanted it to show up as a picture instead of the clickable uh, video link, which I do sometimes, I could do that as well. So it's really, really easy. And all these just get loaded up. And then if I go ahead and go to Q, this will show me everything that's going out in the next few days. So it's nice to go in and check on this just because, you know, if I'm like, uh, actually, I don't really want, you know, this post to go out, I can edit it or delete it. Um, I can go in here for things that have already published once or twice. I can go in and tweak the messaging. So like, I think that I've already posted this one on Twitter. So I could go ahead and change the messaging just a tad. So it didn't look super repetitive. It's really cool. I really like this tool. I think it's pretty, uh, intuitive and it just makes things really easy. It's pretty similar to what I've seen Meet Edgar does where it sort of recycles your posts for you. Um, I'll show you another thing is content curation. I believe that this is in beta, 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 I never know how to say it. Yes, so let's just say I want to look for content about social media. You can just type in social media. From what I've heard, this is still, like I said, in beta or beta, whatever. So they're still working out some kinks with these numbers, but they should actually show you the most shared content and things like that. It looks like it's still a little bit broken, but these are still going to be some popular articles about those posts. So if I see something that I want, I can just go ahead and let's see, I want to actually find one that I wanna share. You can click on the article and actually read it. I don't want to share anything that I'm not, you know, actually a fan of. This looks pretty good. Okay, I'll share that. That looks wholesome enough. So I'm gonna add this to my library. I'm going to add it on Twitter and Facebook. I can choose two different ones too. I didn't mention that. And I can tweak the messaging for each, which is really nice. I'm gonna add this into the motivation library add my message and then just save it to my library. So I'm gonna show you what the Facebook post preview looks like since I didn't show that. Oh yeah, I didn't do the bit.ly link. So I'm going to wanna do that. So I'll just go ahead and switch out the bit.ly link. So it looks a little cleaner, but there's the Facebook preview, the Twitter preview, and I'm going to save that to my library. So this is a pretty cool feature. It's nice when you just like don't have any ideas what to share. Let's see if there's anything on YouTube. I have no idea how this has to do with YouTube. That's interesting. So there's that, there's the publisher, and then there's streams. Let's set up our streams real quick. So I've connected my social channels. So let's click on create a stream. I am going to, I just wanna see what this YouTube one does. I don't even know. So I'm gonna try a YouTube stream first. Okay, this is pretty cool. So I'm able to see my own videos and the comments under them. Looks like that's all that I'm really able to do. Um, so I can comment like a general, oh no, wait, wait, wait. Okay, game changer. I can actually reply to my comments through here, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure that I would do that just because I have the creators app on my phone, but this is nice if you do manage any other um, YouTube channels. So if you have any that maybe you run for a client or for a job or something like that, this would actually be pretty nice because you don't need to go in and get into their actual YouTube account. You can just connect all your different YouTube accounts and manage them in one dashboard. So this is actually pretty cool. Again, it's something that I probably wouldn't really use for myself, but for a client, definitely. Let's try a different stream for now. Let's go ahead and add a stream called Twitter. So this is just my timeline, essentially. So this is everything that I'd see when I log into my normal Twitter feed. Again, this is really cool for if you have multiple different clients, you can go through and just like all their different stuff without having to like log in and out separately. Um, I can filter by engagement. So that way I can see, um, you know, what is trending on Twitter right now, which is really cool so that you know sort of what types of content to produce, what's really resonating with people that you follow, which will hopefully resonate then with your own audience and things like that. So pretty cool. Uh, you can also filter it by sentiment. So if I just wanted to see like negative stuff, this is pretty cool. It looks for words like disappointed, banned, um, crazy, things like that. 
So there's a lot that you can do with it. Uh, you can also look for a phrase. So let's just say net neutrality. This is a pretty popular topic right now. I could see all of the different posts about net neutrality sorted by engagement. Um, that's just one kind of example. But even if I wanted to say like YouTube, maybe you would type in your YouTube channel name or something like that. If you have a big channel, that's actually gonna have mentions on it. So this is just, you know, pretty cool. Okay, so those are really the only things I wanted to show you about Social Weaver. I think it's a really awesome tool. And like I said, I think a lot of it is still sort of in the works. It's very, very new and they're still, you know, receptive to feedback and everything. They have intercom installed on their site. So it's nice because if you have questions, you can chat in with them. So yeah, I hope that this was a helpful video and I hope you guys enjoy trying out the tool. So hope you enjoyed the demo of Social Weaver. I think it's a really pretty cool tool, to be honest. And hope you guys enjoyed it too. I will leave the link for it down below if you want to check it out and sign up for yourself. And let me know in the comments if you guys have any other tools that you use. I know Sprout Social is really big, especially among freelancers. Hasn't quite sold me. I know their reporting is really cool, but I don't know why, but I just haven't done it yet. I just haven't went for it. So yeah, let me know, is, am I mess, missing out? on Sprout, I mean, is there another tool that I'm missing out on? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think of Social Weaver as well. And make sure to thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Click on that bell for sure if you haven't yet so you can get notified. And I will see you guys in the next episode or next uh, video tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.